Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how you can make an almost endless supply of four lace for use in mixed media projects and other art projects for literally pennies at a time. This lace remains flexible, it doesn't go off because it's not made of a food grade substance and you can use it on bottles, boxes, books, anything where you might need the flexibility of lace. It can be easily applied using tacky glue and it's able to be painted very easily. It has a million and one uses. So keep watching if you want to know how to make this wonderful addition to your mixed media creations. First thing you're going to need is one of these. This is a fondant mould used in cake decorating and I got this one on eBay for less than £6 including postage so it's quite good value for money it can be used over and over again as long as you look after it carefully the one thing to, that I will say is if you do use it to make fake lace then don't use it for fondant or any food items after that the next thing you're going to need is some acrylic decorators cork it's very important that you use an acrylic one. Others, I don't know how will work, but with acrylic I know it works really well. And this one cost me a grand total of a pound. You probably make eight or nine sets of lace from one of these, so it works out very inexpensive. You will of course need a corking gun and something to smooth the cork into the silicon mat. This is just a cheap plastic scraper. Before we start I'm just going to dust the mat with some corn flour or corn starch and this will act as a release agent so it will make it easier for us to get the cork out of the mould. We'll just stop it sticking in all the different areas. It's worth tapping off any of the excess corn flour because you don't want that filling up the mould and you actually want the decorator's coat to fill it up. I'll just give it a quick brush. And I'm using a makeup brush from a pan shop. next thing we need to do is to load the cork in the corking gun and it's quite easily done you just press that release lever down. I'm going to take this end off because we don't need it on and I've already cut the end of this off and then I'm just going to crank it so I feel some resistance and then I know the cork's going to come out at the end and then just spread the line of cork on the mat. Next we're going to take the scraper and we're just going to press the cork right into all of the mould. And to make sure that I get to every nook and cranny, I'm going to do it from different directions. It's worth taking a little bit of time on this part to make sure that you've got the mould completely filled because you don't want to get to unmould it only to discover you've got bits missing or there's tears because you haven't filled the mould properly.
and just use your scraper to clean the mould off a little bit. That way you will spot any areas where you're lacking in a bit of cork and you can go back and fill it in. As you can see, these moulds are quite shallow and so it doesn't take an awful lot of the cork to fill it up. And just keep working in different directions and that way you can ensure that your moulds completely full. Just going to add a little bit more cork. I'm only going to add a little bit at a time because you don't want to end up with too much cork on the mat or else when you come to clean it off it will be a bit of a, a nuisance. So when you've done, just have a quick look around, see if there's any spaces that you might have missed. It's not always easy to see. So it's worth spending just a little bit of time to make sure that every part of the mould is filled with cork. There is some excess still on the scraper and I'm just going to clean that off with a baby wipe. Throw the excess away and wash out my scraper because I don't want cork setting on that either. So now we've finished with the cork, I'm just going to release it from the gun. Because we've cut the end off it's not sealed. So I'm just going to take a piece of a plastic bag, put it over the cut end and screw on the nozzle. Because this nozzle already has a hole in it, it would let air into the cork and it would start to cure and you wouldn't be able to use it next time you came to it. Just going to clean up round the edges of the mould with a baby wipe and that's just to catch any of the excess that's smeared over the edge, such as there. I would suggest now leaving that for about an hour, then coming back with a damp sponge and just sponging off the bits that are on the surface. If you don't do that when you come to unmould it, 
you will find there's a fine film behind the um, casting and it doesn't look very good. So I'll come back in about an hour and give that a wipe down with a damp sponge. Okay, so it's about an hour later and that's started to cure. I'm just going to take a very lightly damp sponge and very, very carefully just go over and wipe off any of that film that started to dry. It's worth taking your time over this bit because it will make life a lot easier once you come to unmould it. Not that the unmoulding will be any easier, but you won't have as much clean up afterwards. You need to make sure that your sponge is only very lightly damp. If you start soaking it, it's possible that you'll wash out some of the cork from the actual mould itself and you'll end up with a very thin piece of very fragile lace. Once the clean up is done, set it aside for at least 8 hours. That way it will fully cure in the mould. Don't be tempted to unmould it any earlier because if it's not fully cured it will go stretchy and you won't get a, a decent piece of lace from it. The cork has been left to cure for 8 hours and it's now time to unmould it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to just give it a light brush with corn flour along the back and that's just to stop the cork sticking to itself when you take it out of the mould because even though it's cured it can still be quite tacky unless you give it a dusting of corn flour. And then I find the easiest way is just to take a corner of the mould and start peeling it back. It can be quite tricky to start with but you've just got to be a little bit patient with it and not to pull too hard or else you're likely to either stretch it or rip it and that's one thing you don't want to do. Once I've got it started I like to turn it over onto a flat mat and then just roll. Roll the silicone back. And that gradually releases. cork lace. Just be careful not to get too carried away because you can still just tear this in places and it's not something you really want to do. If it does tear it's not the end of the world because if you're using it on mixed media once it's stuck down with other items stuck on top of it and it's painted you won't really notice. And there we have our finished flexible piece of lace and that can be used on a myriad of projects. It will keep because it's um, acrylic cork it doesn't go off so it won't go mouldy. I find it best to keep it rolled up in parchment paper it's just an easy way to store it until you come to use it. You could fold it into parchment paper and put it in a, a file if you wish. When you've completely demoulded all the cork lace, the only thing to do now is to give it a thorough clean in hot soapy water just to remove all the cornstarch residue and any cork that's left in places. Allow it to air dry before you use it again. Make sure it's completely dry because the last thing you want to do is to be brushing in cornstarch or corn flour into a damp mould. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos of this type please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.